So I consider Creativity Explored to be sort of like a portal into the San Francisco that I knew in the 90s. Uh, maybe a little bit of a time warp, but a really progressive and ever-evolving one. I am amazed when I contemplate the fact that the vast majority of our staff live in San Francisco. That was Linda Johnson, Executive Director at Creativity Explored. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. This is the first podcast in a little series we're doing with Creativity Explored, a place near and dear to our hearts. I first came across CE back in 2000 when I first moved to San Francisco. I was in the mission frequently back then and stumbled upon a unique art gallery on 16th just a little away from the riffraff a few blocks down. I was immediately captivated by the vibrancy and spontaneity of the art. When I learned that this was a space for developmentally disabled folks, it set up shop in my heart. Fast forward 21 years or so, and we sit down with Linda Johnson, who briefly shares how she got from Ohio to San Francisco, and eventually to her current gig as Creativity Explored's executive director. Please note that the next episode in this series will drop next Tuesday, not Thursday like we usually do. It's the anniversary of January 6th, and we'd just rather stay quiet that day. Do be sure to listen through on this one. There's a special message toward the end from our friends at KQED's Right Nowish that you don't want to miss. Here's Linda. So my name's Linda, and I, I grew up mostly in Ohio. Um, and I studied um, English and creative writing in college. Um, and always had a passion for city life. Um, Always loved the idea of living in what to me was a big city. So after I um, went to uh, grad school at the University of Iowa, where I studied both social work and poetry, I had a random idea to move to San Francisco. I didn't have a job offer. I didn't have any um, exact plan about what I was going to do there, except maybe work in the social services field. Um, Had a few friends who lived in the area, but not too many. So I just picked up and, and moved to the city. When that was a little more feasible to do right back then much more feasible (laughs) it seemed incredibly expensive to me at the time because the rent was probably three times as much as it was in columbus ohio or iowa city but looking back it was amazing to be able to rent a um you know one bedroom apartment for 750 dollars right a lot of course hindsight is is what it is but it seemed like a lot of time and maybe but, but not a barrier to your coming here, clearly. That's right. Do you want to talk about, like, uh, before moving here, what your impressions of San Francisco or the Bay Area were? And also, had you, had you visited, or did you kind of come sight unseen? I visited only once before moving to San Francisco. And I remember that even the, the trees, the leaves, the plants, all looked so different than they did in the Midwest where I grew up or the East Coast where I lived when I was really little. Um, And I was so impressed by the crispness and the clarity of the air and all of the beautiful, um, colorful homes on hills. Um, It was both so different that it was a little scary and Mm. then so so magical and exciting. And I've sort of never gotten over that feeling about living in California, even though there are so many challenges we're facing right now from fires to COVID. Right, right. I think that's a common thread. Um, I know it's what a lot of what you just said is true for me. I'm a transplant as well. Um, but And it's not that native Bay Areans don't appreciate it. It's just it's a little different when you have that contrast of growing up where the air maybe isn't as crisp <laughs> or the leaves are what they are or yeah or it's a lot flatter and grayer yes like you there's no such things as homes on the hill <laughs> and there might be a victorian house somewhere in town but it's just one or right 
Yeah. Um, okay, so so you moved here, you said, like, kind of late 80s, early 90s, is that mm, right? It was it was in the 90s. It was over 30 years ago now. Okay. Uh, what kind of, we can kind of breeze through things that you've been doing in those, you know, however many years before you started here at Creativity Explored. So I studied social work, um, but always had a really major passion for the arts, literature, visual arts of all kinds. So the more that I lived in San Francisco, the more I kind of started to combine those those things. Um, and when I first moved to San Francisco, one of the first things I did was I was a night manager at a domestic violence shelter. Okay. Um, and it was a building in the Western Edition that was... Um, supposedly haunted and I remember oh. having some pretty spooky experiences there when I was staying up all night okay then I moved on to working at uh, Mercy housing which has just thousands of affordable housing units um, around California and many many of them are in San Francisco in the Bay Area so I was a service coordinator there and I did a lot to help communities build um, build togetherness and coherence through the arts and and all kinds of other supports um and i found that that brought me a lot of joy um supporting the largely immigrant communities that lived in the buildings that i worked in and then i went on to work in an organization called street side stories as executive director um it's now merged with performing arts workshop which is another youth arts education organization and we basically helped young people tell their life stories through the arts it was a, such a wonderful job that um, I couldn't tear myself away for about 12 years. Wow. And then, There's something about people's life stories. That's what, that's what we yeah. do, essentially. Yeah, it's just, it's always, it's just constantly, com it's compelling. It's very compelling, yeah. and it's very satisfying um, to, to support people in, in doing that, especially young people who are kind of starting out in life and developing their identities. Mm -hmm. So after that, I changed gears a bit, and I went to work for the city of Walnut Creek. Okay. And um, what many people, especially people in San Francisco, may not know is Walnut Creek is an incredibly arts-focused city. Okay. Um, it has an enormous commitment in the city budget to the arts, whether it's the gallery, the Performing Arts Center, and in my case, there are very sizable arts education programs. So they kind of have everything from like a weaving studio to a ceramic studio to awesome. all kinds of dance programs um, and preschools that are arts-based and so forth. So um, I worked there for a few years managing those programs, um, which was definitely a cultural shift from uh, from working in San Francisco, but That's a what lot people of fun. Know. <laughs> what? About Walnut Creek, is, it's not San Francisco. Yeah, it's not but, San Francisco, but it has some of the same qualities. It has sure. a lot of low-income families and individuals um, who need support too. Right. Um, and it was great uh, doing work that helped people access those programs. Mm -hmm. Did you continue living in, this, in San Francisco while you worked there? Or so did you... right around that time, I moved to the East Bay, where okay. I've lived in Berkeley and now in Oakland. Okay, okay. But um, obviously, you now you work in San Francisco. I do. And I forgot to mention, or I haven't mentioned yet, um, how I first fell in love with Creativity Explored. Yes, let's hear that story. Yes, yeah, so I used to live just a few blocks away from our 16th Street studio. I lived right next door to Byright. Oh, in, yeah, on 18th? In, yeah. Yeah, okay. In the big orange building. I don't know if it's been oh, painted, yeah. but it used to be orange. When, and when was that that you lived there? That was like in the 2000s. Okay. And We were neighbors, by the way. Oh, wow. Well, I lived 20th in Valencia. Oh, yeah. Totally. Over in this part of yes. the world alive. So I would pass by the studio, and at that time they had these, you know, sales that were sort of the only game in town for buying CE art. And so yes. I attended some of the sales where there were big line lineups of people waiting at the door. This was before we had, you know, things like e-commerce on our website. Right. Um, and I just fell in love. I fell in love not only with the art, which is amazing and high quality and beautiful and 
kind of a portal into the soul of our artists. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also fell in love with, you know, the creaky old dance hall that's mm-hmm. all full of, um, you know, color and little scraps of this and that everywhere. Mm-hmm. And the community that surrounds Creativity Explored. Creativity just a- attracts wonderful, kind people. Yeah. Um, and so it's a delightful place to be and spend time. So I kind of fell in love with this organization. And I remember saying to myself while I was working for the city of Walnut Creek, you know, someday, if I was to ever change jobs and do something different, my dream job would be to be executive director of this organization. And then wow. one day, a lady named Nancy Painter contacted me, um, who was the search consultant for hiring a new executive director for CE because Amy Taub, the former director, was was retiring after a very long, successful run at CE. And um, that was just a really weird experience, like someone was reading my mind. It turned out that Nancy lives in Walnut Creek and had asked herself, gosh, I wonder who is involved in the Walnut Creek, (laughs) um, the Walnut Creek arts community that might be a good candidate for this position. So, I'm a very planful person, so, and I hadn't been changing, uh, planning on making any job changes. And so I was shocked. And I was at first like, well, this isn't part of my plan. But the more I thought about it, the more I knew this was an irresistible invitation to consider um, and to talk more with people at the organization. So the more I learned about CE, the more I loved it. And that's been true ever since in the four plus years that I've been here as director. I mean, I'm thinking about the the term dream job. Did it feel like a dream that they were approaching at at first, maybe? Absolutely. (laughs) It's like, oh, this is exactly what I would like to be doing. And Uh, how often does that happen in one's life? So I took it as a sign. And here you are. Mm-hmm. You said four, four plus mm-hmm. years now. Yeah. Um, do you want to uh, let folks know what CE is now? What you're, I mean, not only the pandemic, you can certainly talk about mm-hmm. the experience of how y'all navigated that. But, um, you know, just let folks who, who might not know or who, um, like me, my first brush with uh, this place was back when I lived in the neighborhood some 20 years ago and I think that the art sales I think there were some just shows that they would open the gallery and and I yeah like you I fell in love but I don't know that some folks know about it some folks haven't maybe might might have forgotten about it especially Mm -hmm. during the pandemic so you want to just let let people know what y'all do sure so creativity explored is a community that places the creativity of people with disabilities at its center Um, And we serve over 130 artists with developmental disabilities, um, as well as, well, typically before the pandemic, welcoming in um, over 10,000 community members each year, whether they're coming to visit our gallery or our various events and pop-ups that we hold in our facilities or around town. Um, But... What we are, in a nutshell, is a creative community that really values the artistry of people with disabilities and facilitates their growth um, as artists and also as whole people. And I think that's one of the one of the um, biggest shifts we have been contemplating as an organization these days. So I don't know if you've ever heard of the term person-centered thinking. Yes. yes. Yeah. So that's really important in our field right now and a lot of other fields as well. Um, But it's really about moving away from a service to environment Mm -hmm. where you kind of come up with a program and say, hey, let's give this to people and we'll give them service and be charitable and decide what's best for them to a more in community with orientation. Mm. So as we move into our next few years, we're gonna keep doing what we've kind of already begun um, all these years ago um, of finding out more and more what dreams and wishes our artists hold, what's important to them, 
Also, how to support them with what's important for them to be healthy, happy, well supported within our community. So we're moving from facilitating artistry to facilitating artistry and also looking at our artists as whole people who spend an awful lot of time with us. So figuring out how we can support them um, in having better lives to mm -hmm. be, you know, just very, very simple. I'm really proud of the artists at CE because first of all, they're following the artistic practice that is them, that, that represents the, the soul of what they have to offer to the world. And me and our staff, um, see so many people, you know, join us, maybe never having created art before, and then develop a really thriving art practice. And often becomes someone who is collected, sometimes worldwide, um, represented in museums, galleries, um, someone who earns significant income from their art um, that enables them to have a, a richer and more multifaceted life, a career um, mm -hmm. that they might not otherwise have had. What are some examples? I mean, you don't have to name drop people per se, but like, wh like where have CE mm -hmm. artists shown? Yes, so we frequently, um, you know, do very well with our artists' work at the Outsider Art Fair in New York. Mm -hmm. We've also attended other art fairs. Um, currently, we are talking with local museums like the SF MoMA about acquiring work. We just wrapped up a really wonderful collaborative exhibit with our two sister organizations, which are in the East Bay at Christie's um, Auction House Showroom, um, thanks to the wonderful folks there at Christie's. Um, and we've shown in uh, galleries and museums from you know Japan to Europe um, and around the world. Um, and we have passionate collectors of specific artists um, who really come to us again and again. Another thing I'm really excited about is our plans for the next five or so years, which involve not only putting our artists kind of at the center of our work and helping them influence what we do more and more. It's also about creating a space that's really worthy of our kind of cornerstone status in the San Francisco community. So we've started exploring acquiring a much bigger um, and newer facility that's gonna enable us to expand our impact um, maybe offer more broad and diverse programming mm -hmm. and serve more people. We're really excited about that and we're just kind of in the startup stages of exploring that. Mm -hmm. But amazingly, given, you know, given all of the challenges of San Francisco real estate, we feel really optimistic about it. So you'll be hearing more about that as we move forward. Good. And what are some ways that, let's say, the average listener of the show um, can get involved, I guess, gen generic, I know that's a generic question, but I'm, I'm sure there's multiple things, but. Um, so first of all, we would love it if you would visit our website um, at creativityexplored.org, sign up for our newsletter so that you can learn about all of the different happenings at Creativity Explored. Um, in typical times, we have a volunteer program that's been um, more open to existing volunteers these days because for obvious reasons. Right. Um, but many people get involved in CE as donors. We're also very partnership-based. Mm. So we're partnering with everybody from local businesses to LinkedIn and Google um, to do all kinds of amazing projects. Like for right now, we're working on a project to um, be one of those projections on the um, Salesforce. Salesforce Tower oh and to have our own Google Doodle. And yes. um, we have um, had a lengthy exhibit at the, um, at the LinkedIn uh, public space in their new building and at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Oh, wow. um, and all kinds of wonderful exhibits. So one of our artists um, realized a dream by just um, traveling to New York yeah. 
to um, open his exhibit in Brooklyn, for Is that example. Vincent, by any chance? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're yes. going to be talking with him next yes, week. Yes, so yeah. he'll tell you all about it. Awesome. Um, so we're also getting ready right now for the Outsider Art Fair in mm -hmm. New York, which we visit pretty much every year. We mm -hmm. didn't do it last year because it was virtual. Right. Um, but um, that's also a place where we connect with the East Coast community um, and share our work with the arts community. Awesome. And um, can you tell people how to find you besides the website, maybe on socials? Definitely look us up on Instagram, um, Facebook, Twitter. And then we're also a big presence on Artsy, so we post all of our all of our shows on Artsy as well. Okay, um, and then the last thing uh, I, I'd love if you could respond to: um, we're we're in our fourth season of this podcast. We have different themes every season, and the theme this season is "We're Still Here," and it's speaking to for us a lot of things, a lot of the change in the city in the last, especially ten years, and then I mean, you know. A sort of change on steroids in the last two years. Um, what does it mean to you for Creativity Explored to still be here? So I consider Creativity Explored to be sort of like a portal into the San Francisco that I knew in the 90s. Uh, maybe a little bit of a time warp, but a really progressive and ever-evolving one. I am amazed when I contemplate the fact that the vast majority of our staff live in San Francisco. Mm, yeah. um, we have a staff of over 35 people. Um, the majority of them are very passionate San Francisco residents. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really exciting. And the same is true of our artists. A few of our artists live in um, San Mateo County, but most of them live in San Francisco. Awesome. Um, and many of our staff and artists live close to Creativity Explored. Uh, Some of them even walk here. Yes. Um, so it's lovely to know that this organization, through the support of, you know, incredible donors, incredible partners, um, the Golden Gate Regional Center and the state, which fund about half of our operations through funds for day programs, um, and our very committed staff, um, you know, have have made this a very enduring place. I, I think of it as kind of a San Francisco icon. We Absolutely. typically will win the Best of the Bay Award for yes. Best Nonprofit. Um, I always vote most for you. years. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to the longevity of our staff. Mm -hmm. It's frankly unbelievable. Um, we have basically the first employee who ever worked here, who's worked here for nearly 40 years wow. um, in Pilar Olabraria. And we have um, many employees who've worked here for over 10 or over 20 years. Awesome. Um, being a 10-year employee is pretty average at our organization. Wow. Um, because I think people just find this place and it's a place that they that they love and they, they fit with and they mm -hmm. want to be here. That was Linda Johnson. Check back next week to meet Creativity Explored artist J.D. Green. Part 2 drops Tuesday, January 11th, wherever you listen to podcasts. And now, a quick word from our friends over at Right Nowish. Ever heard of Right Nowish? It's a podcast, and I'm the host, Pendarvis Harshaw. We made Right Nowish because the Bay Area has been undergoing some big changes. So I wanted to talk to the artists and creatives on the front line of history. We chop it up about gentrification, art, healing, you name it. And we have some fun along the way. Man, the first time I put on a pair of spandex, it was like, uh-oh, freedom. Check out the Right Nowish podcast. Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, J. 
Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have more than 160 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can, please rate and review our show so we can reach even more folks. We love email. Drop us a line at storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, stay healthy, keep dreaming, and we'll see you next time on Storied San Francisco. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.